Hello! In this video we are going to see a slight different problem which we call a base excitation model. Instead of having a force acting directly on the body as we've seen in the previous videos, we can have an excitation on this block by means of a displacement of its support. It's a very common uh, engineering situation where machines are either supported on the ground and the ground is transmitting some vibration or there are many machines supported on a common uh, structure and one machine uh, the vibration from one machine is transmitted to the other via this structure like so. So we suppose that we know what this displacement is and we want to know what the displacement of the block or the machine or whatever the system we're uh, analyzing is going to be. In order to obtain the dynamical equations for the system we'll follow a similar procedure of applying Newton's law to this block with mass m and for that we'll find that the forces acting on it are the spring force and the damper force. There's nothing else acting on this block now. Note that both these forces are now proportional to the relative movement uh, of the block in relation to the base. So you see that the distortion on this spring is the displacement of the block minus the displacement of the base. And that's what we put here on the spring force. Something similar will happen to the damper but now we have the relative velocity between the block and the base and that's what we're putting here in parentheses multiplying the damper factor. So we have velocity here of the block minus the velocity of the base. So these are the two forces now in the general uh, term that the displacement or the distortion on the spring is given by the relative displacement of either of its ends. In the end, our dynamical equation will look like this. This part here on the left, very similar to what we had before. And this part here on the right, indicating what the displacement of the base is inputting uh, as forces into our system. We can see that these two terms here combined is very similar to an external force acting on the body. So the general response of the system is very similar to what we would have with an external force uh, applied directly on the block as we had before here but obviously the amplitude uh, of this uh, force will be given by this uh, function that we have here for the displacement of the base. Again we will be interested in the case where this displacement follows an harmonic function like this so we have xb given by an amplitude, the capital XB, uh, times sine of uh, some frequency over time. If we describe our XB like so, our velocity of the base will simply be the derivative of this function over time. So we get this other expression here. If we input these two expressions in here and here, we'll get this full equation um, depending on the parameters of the system m, c and k and our uh, frequency of excitation omega and our amplitude of excitation xb which will happen which will appear here as well similarly to what we've done for the case of external excitation acting directly on the block, we could solve this differential equation and find the solution for x, the displacement of the block over time. However, again, we are more interested in what is the amplitude of this motion in steady state solution. So that's what we're going to call this capital X. And more specifically, we're going to find this expression of the ratio between this amplitude of the block in steady state and the amplitude of the base excitation, the capital XB. 
and this will give it, it will be given by this expression here, this square root of these various terms. Remember that we are using these two ratios here, the frequency ratio and the damping factor. Uh, the frequency ratio is the base excitation frequency divided by the natural frequency of the system and the damping factor is the damping coefficient divided by the critical damping coefficient. We've seen that before in the previous videos. So this quantity here, this ratio, uh, we call this transmissibility of displacement. It means what is the displacement of the block when we have some amplitude of displacement for the base. See that as different to what we had as an external force acting on the system. This quantity here is a displacement. It's given in, in SI units uh, by meters, not by newtons as a unit of force. And also this ratio we had before for the external force, we were, we were comparing the amplitude of displacement to the static delta. Now we're comparing it to the amplitude of the displacement of the base. So it's a slightly different ratio, but it gives us uh, very similar information from, uh, from the system. So let's go ahead and try to look at what this expression here looks like graphically by using Octave. So I've written this transmissibility uh, of displacement expression right here in line 11. So be very careful, uh, there are many terms uh, squared and the square root and divisions and all. So take your time, pause the video now and make sure that you write the expression just like as I'm writing it here. So, for us to use this expression, we need two parameters. Zeta, which is the damping factor, and the what we're calling here R, which is the frequency ratio. So, I'm defining them here in lines 9 and 8. So, this is the damping factor. See that for the damping factor, we need the mass of the system and the natural frequency of the system. So, as well, we need these two parameters to have zeta. And for the frequency ratio, we also need the natural frequency. So, I'm going backwards here and defining the natural frequency on the line before. As we know, it's the square root of the stiffness coefficient over the mass. So, again, we need the mass, the value for this, and the value for our stiffness. And also remember that we need the value for the damping of the system here, the damping coefficient. So I have some values for all these um, coefficients here, so we're using some values similar to what we've used before. You can go ahead and find some other example of an application of a system and see if you work out some parameters for yourself. And also we need the expression for the base excitation, so we need the amplitude, the capital XB, and the excitation frequency, omega. And I'm giving them here, so I'm saying that the, uh, sorry, this is not, as we've discussed, this is not force amplitude, that is base displacement amplitude in meters, not in newtons. I was using the script from the previous video. So be careful and remember to put the comments here as well so you don't forget that this is a displacement, this is not a force. And we can define some uh, range for uh, this excitation frequency so that we can see what is this, what this curve is doing as we vary this parameter r here. So as we have all the parameters we need um, to use this expression here, the transmissibility expression, we can calculate it and plot and see what the figure of this transmissibility uh, as function of the frequency looks like. So I'll just go ahead and run this script and this is the figure that we get. 
So you see that it's uh, very similar in shape to the figure what we had of the magnitude, um, sorry, of the magnification uh, of the force as function of the frequency ratio, that, which is what we've seen in the previous video. We get some figure that starts here at 1, so when we don't have any frequency, when we have a static displacement here, uh, we'll just have as well the same value for the displacement of the block. That's what this 1 is telling us. And as we start increasing the frequency, we see that the displacement of the block, the x, starts getting uh, larger than the displacement of the base. You can get various values for this depending on your parameters of the system, but it will be bigger than 1. Uh, it reaches a maximum here closer to our natural frequency, or when the excitation frequency is equal to the natural frequency. And after that it starts decreasing. And it's interesting to note here that after some point here it will start being lower than the displacement of the base. So you get some uh, vibration isolation uh, characteristic here for larger frequencies or frequencies larger than some uh, point here that we can find out as well.